everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. Um, I have not been around for the last five or six weeks filming videos because there's been a series of things that have happened that kind of dampened my enthusiasm or made it impossible with timing for me to do a video. The first one in February was there was a death in my family. My father's last surviving brother passed away, so I went to the Panhandle of Texas to attend a funeral came home and a few days later my son wanted me to come to Wisconsin for a visit so later in that same week I got on an airplane and I flew to Wisconsin to Milwaukee and stayed there for a week. When I got home I got sick with COVID so then there was about 10 days, two weeks recovery from that. It wasn't Thank goodness I'd had my shots and booster because all it was was a wicked bad sore throat. A um, little fever for a few days and after that it was okay, but it took a while for the sore throat to go away. So there's just been a lot going on. And then this last week, um, our oldest dog passed away unexpectedly. Well, we knew she was sick, but we thought she was kind of maintaining and then she up and died. So it's just been <laughs> one thing right after the other. I thought that 20 and 21 were bad, but 22 is, whoa, has just been kind of bizarre. Just bizarre. All right, so I hear the timer on the microwave going, hang on a second, I'll be right back. Sorry, I'm home alone while my husband's at the garden center um, loading patio rocks for something we're doing in the yard. So I'm here by myself. Um, okay, so the reason I have not been doing videos is because while I was sick and gone and all that stuff, it was easier for me to take knitting than it was to drag art supplies with me. So if some of you follow me on Instagram, you will see that I posted uh, shawls. These are, this is the S Sedona Triangle Shaw, which is a free pattern off of lionbrand.com. My cousin sent me four skeins of yarn. Shoot, I think it's been way over a year or two <laughs> since she sent them to me. So I got the, the yarn out for a project to carry on the plane with me, and I started knitting. And I think, Wait, I started knitting on it before I left on the plane. Oh, uh, let's see. I think I started with this one first at home. I thought, well, let me, let me start knitting a little bit. So I took this with me to the funeral for the hotel, and I knit there, and I finished this first shawl, which I really, really like. Then I got out the yarn for this one because I figured, well, I'm on a roll. The pattern's out. I got the needles going, so let me just knit this one. So then I knit this one. This one I think I might have knit in Milwaukee but I can't remember. They were one shawl right after the other and then I did this one. The brown brown tone one. And I still have one more skein left to do. So I was really into the knitting thing and I decided that I was enjoying it so much that I wanted to keep going. So I while I was in Milwaukee, my son took me to two yarn stores where I made some purchases. And, uh, like I needed more yarn, sort of like we need more paper, right? So I bought some yarn and came home, redid my closet for my yarn stash to put them in the categories that I have left. I did um, lace weight, sock yarn, miscellaneous and baby yarn because I don't have a lot of bulky because I don't usually knit with bulky yarn. I don't have a lot of sport weight or worsted weight yarn, although I do now. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, before I left, I had um, started a pair of socks for a friend and they were going okay Here's the, the socks. I started, I don't know, back in the fall, I guess. I can't remember. And then I got home and I didn't like the way they looked, so I ripped them and I was 
um, at the turning of the heel and the gusset on both of them and I decided I did not like the way they looked with the reinforcement yarn that I put in there on the heel so I ripped them all back to here and have been knitting um, on them to you know make up for what I ripped out so these are really long socks and you know sock yarn only comes in I, I only had I think this was one 420 gram ball not exactly sure because like I, I, I got rid of everything concerning this yarn I don't know why but I did so the person I'm knitting these for likes more leg so I made them a little longer than I normally would for me and her and I have the same size foot about a quarter inch difference in our foot measure the length of our foot measurements um, and because I made these so long, I don't have enough to finish the toes. So I went through my stash and I looked and I had told her I would do yellow, but the yellows I have are not the right shade of yellow. And I don't want to go out and spend money just for the yellow on the toes. So I went and looked in my stash and I have this that's a beige color, which is not horrible. I mean, I looked in my stash for all these other colors to match these socks. and I just don't have anything. So I thought I would do beige. So I have these two socks, and this is a private pattern that is trademarked by someone else's shop, so I can't share the pattern. But um, So that's the pair, and I came home and just started knitting on them, ripped them back and re-knit them. Found this, I think I looked through this last night and decided on the beige. Then I was so excited, I was watching a bunch of videos, yarn videos, and I decided that I knit so many socks, and I have four pairs that are, three pairs that are on the needles right now, that I needed a knitting bag, a project bag, just for my socks. So I ordered this with this, and then it also came with, you could buy the stuff individual, but I bought the whole set. Then it came with this little thing right here, and inside here, it has little plastic snaps. I keep extra crochet hooks to pick up uh, drop stitches and uh, oops, an extra needle to, to knit with. I do all my socks on six inch double pointed needles. I don't do magic loop or two at a time. I learned on double points and I'm perfectly happy with that. I have all the things I need so I'm not spending the money on needles anymore. Well, I say that, but you know how it goes. Anyway, so I bought this. Let me go through my receipts here so I can give this lovely woman her credit. Um, this came from Watts Handmade at Etsy.com, and the lady's name is Erin. Um, so you can go look at her Etsy store. I'll try to link the Etsy, Etsy, the Etsy place that I bought this in the description box below so that you can see her inventory. She asked me whether I wanted a string, a drawstring bag or a zipper. And I said, because I have a cat, I need the zipper because my yarn would be all over hell and gone if it wasn't zipped up in a bag. Okay, so a while back, no, let's not do that. Um, okay, so that's the first bag I ordered. Then I got... I went cruising and I saw another bag that I really like. Now this bag is different than the other one because it's taller and it's it's still flat on the bottom, but it's really tall. And this came on it. I didn't have to pay extra to have this on it. It's got a cute little tassel. And again, it's a zipper. And it is holding one sock. <laughs> one sock. This sock has got to be in process for 10 years or more. And there's the other half for the other sock. The the uh, yarn that is this is, and thank goodness I saved it, is, is this on live? Yeah, on live um, super sock yarn. It's a cotton, it's a 100 gram ball, uh, 380 meters. There's, uh, I don't know, it's in, I think it's either, Ger I think it might be German sock yarn, but I'm not sure, but it comes in all kinds of different color variations, and the brand is still around because I, I actually saw some in the yarn shop that I went to in um, Milwaukee. 
So I know this stuff is still around. Oh, let me see. How much did I pay for this? I paid $14.95 and I split, I split it in half. And I managed to make it through one sock and then never did the other sock. I don't know why, but this is in my project bag, my coffee project bag. So now I know this is the same pattern as the other socks I showed you. It's the plain sock pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit the second sock and then this will be a finished object, not a WIP, a whip or a work, work in progress. But I bought a coffee bag. I just think it's so cute. All right, uh, that coffee bag came from, let me make sure I got it right. I, I saved all my invoices. This is from, this is from Good Stuff Crafts at Good Stuff Crafts, Crafts, Crafts at Etsy.com. Um, and the lady's name is Brenda. All these people were very nice that, that sent me my stuff and my invoices. They wrote a little note on there. And they were very nice um, about the shipping and stuff. So there we got that. Then I, now I already had this bag. This was made by Gina Ahrens. And I can't remember if I paid for it or she gifted it to me. But I decided instead of putting art supplies in here, I was going to put knitting. So I used this as a bag for another pair of socks. These, This pair is for me. And I think... This is yarn. Did I buy this? Wait a minute. Let me look and see. Did I buy this yarn in? No. Where's the tag? No, well, I don't know where the tag is. So I must have bought this a while ago. So I have my two socks, which I'm really close to finishing. I'm working my way down the foot, which should not be too much longer on this one. And then I'll do the toe. Now, these are not as long in the leg as the pair I'm making for my friend. So hopefully I'll have enough to make the toe in the same color as this. And I had, again, I did not like the reinforcement yarn on these. So I ripped the sock back, ripped out the heel, took the reinforcement yarn out, and started basically from here all the way back again. So I've been knitting on two pairs of socks at the same time. So one pair goes in the bag and I flip back and forth between them and the other pair goes in this uh, red and white knitting bowl that got knocked off by the cat and broke again. I glued it back together. I bought this at a... what's it called? I, I bought this in 2015 in West Virginia at a yarn shop in West Virginia and I just loved it because it was red and white. All right, so there's that. And I also knit an afghan for a friend's husband, and I knit him two watchman caps. All of those have gone in the mail. Okay, something else I ordered is this right here. This came from Walnut Farm Designs. Again, very nice people, person. This is a row counter to remind you what row you're on. They're little sheep, and each little sheep has a number on it, one through 10. And you can use this to count your rows about what row you're on. So I would clip this onto my knitting, uh, my knitting. My, my counter says I'm on row 52 on here. So I would have this the, on the needle would be the five and the two. I would put these through the needle or I would do a clip on two and a clip on five to remind myself that it's 52. It wouldn't be 25, but I think I could put these on the needle like this so that it shows that it's 52. So you can do all kinds of numbers with this. It goes up to um, 10. So you can do lots of rows this way. Or, and I just thought this was so cute. I don't know if I'll use it for that, but I could not pass those little sheep up. All right, and it came in this little organza bag. I just thought it was so cute. Um, then I saw an idea where somebody takes these. Now, the, this is a row counter that people put on straight needles years and years ago. And I think I have, I have one on 
two or three different socks, and then I have these others. I think I have five of these. So there's one, and there's one on another sock, and then I have these three. And I saw on Etsy that people are taking these. I don't use straight needles anymore. I only use, well, I use the double points. So I don't put it on the double point needle itself. I take um, a safety pin and just put this on it because I have a, um, a circle on both ends that I can hang it either direction, doesn't matter. And then instead of doing something else or trying to remember on a piece of paper, you just roll the numbers around on here for what row and, you know, oops, that's upside down. You can do this to however many you need to do, I think up to 100 plus, you can use these. So I've been, I, I went ahead and outfitted all these extras that I had. I used paper beads and beads that I had on hand and wire I had on hand. Uh, some of them are decorative twisted wire that I learned how to make. This one right here is, is copper wire that was decorative twisted. So I have these as row counters. Plus I have the, um, where's the other kind of row counter? There's another row counter that's, I've got an, I've got another one coming. There's the row counter in here. This is also a row counter where you click it and here's this, this is the, um, the numbers to do the double row thing and you click this and it'll flip it over to 60. So there's this counter. This is from Clover. Then there is another row counter. Where is it? I don't know. Well, I thought I had it. Maybe not. I have another row counter. Oh, here it is, that I have, no, it might take me a second to get it untangled from here because it's a mess in there right now. Arr. Then this is an old one, and I think this one is also from Clover, but I'm not sure. And here's the kind that somebody made for me where they put beads on it, and you hang it down your neck this way so that you can pick it up and look at it, and then you roll these for the numbers, and then you click it and this would turn over to 60. It's on 59, 59 right now, so it'll click it to 60. And you just click it. You know those things that people use at Walmart and stuff where they click? Well, basically this is the same thing, just a cheaper version. So there's that. Okay, so that's all my purchases. I'm waiting for something to come from Suffolk, England. And those are stitch markers that are very cute, but I didn't realize, wasn't paying attention as usual. When I ordered it, I did not realize it was coming from Suffolk, Suffolk, England, but it should be here in a couple weeks. So I'm waiting for that to come. All right, so then I'm gonna show you, as soon as I go get it, something else that I've been working on. Okay, on top of all the knitting that I've been doing and no paper stuff, I decided that I needed to ease my way back into doing journals and paper because right now I'm so into knitting it's not even funny. So in my on my Instagram I keep seeing these advertisements for uh, vintagehandmadebook.com or vintage paper I don't know anyway. So I decided that I would check out their classes. They were offering a class and they sent me my that I, I signed up and then they sent me an email confirming that I wasn't a nut job, I guess. Well, psst, that's a loose interpretation. Anyway, so they sent an email saying that it costs $10 to take the class and every day from 11 Central Standard Time to noon Central Standard Time, the woman lives on the East Coast that did the class. I live in Central Standard. So my, class, my time was 11 to 12 for five days, Monday through Friday this last week, last week, um, it was a Zoom class, and you get a video every day of what you need to do, and then you get together from 11 to 12, and then she talks about different things about what the class was about and what you should have already done or worked towards or whatever. Then Sunday, and then Saturday there was nothing. Then Sunday we had a wrap-up party, which was really, really great because... You got to see all the books that everybody made, and it was just fantastic. 
So if you see anything from, let me, let me look up on my phone. I want to make sure I get their name correct because I'm sure some of you guys have seen this pop up on your um, Instagram. I see all kinds of mess like that constantly, and I'm like, yeah, it's not real. Oh, well, it was real. It was very real, and I'm so glad that I checked into it. Okay, where are we here? It was vintage something. Here we go. I don't know if I'll find it in here. All boxes. This is from the Handmade Book Club. And there is a group that joined the club. And this was the five day journal challenge for the long stitch journal. Yeah. And I took the class and I made my project. For, I'm not a beginner, so for me it, it was rather quick. So here is my journal that I made in the class. Um, I went kind of crazy with the paper bead thing. Anyway, so this, it, she leaves you to do what you want on the cover. She gives you the dimensions. So you do your own cover. I made my cover out of canvas that I had already in 9 by 12 sheets and just tore it out of the tablet. It has six, in it, six signatures in it. And then I learned a new way to stitch the book. So here it's long stitch. So I, I learned a new method. And then with the leftover thread from the new method, um, you could do beads or no beads or oh my gosh what people did on the sides of their books was amazing and um, I learned a new way to stitch a book and I was so impressed with how they ran it and what a good time I had I learned something new and I was so excited to learn something new on zoom in the class can you believe that the uh, wrap-up party, I think it was 380-some-odd people because it was on a Sunday when some people out here would be in church from 11 to 12. So I think there's a lot of people that probably in this section of the country were not there because they were um, in church. Uh, anyway, so I made a new book, and I learned some new things, and I got some great information about paper, different types of paper, and I, I saw and spent time with some really nice people. So if you ever have a chance to take a book f a book class with the Handmade Book Club, you should really do it. You will learn something wonderful. So that's why I have not been around for the last five weeks with a video. I thought I would catch you guys up. Um, what else? I'm looking around to see if there's anything else sitting around that I need to tell you about. But I think that about wraps it up. This was the last thing I wanted to show you is that I made the, the book from the um, book club lesson Zoom thing. It was a lot of fun. And I learned a new technique that I am thrilled with. So I'll be trying that again in other books still yet to come. So I'm sorry I haven't been around in five or six weeks. But like I said, there was a death in my family. Um, my husband and I got sick. I went, to, I went to Wisconsin, I came home being sick or got sick shortly after I got home. Then um, our dog died. So it just, <laughs> it's just been one thing after another. And to be honest with you, knitting is a way for me to comfort myself besides eating. And I really like to eat. <laughs> so... Um, that's what I've been up to. Hopefully soon I will be back to making journals and doing a bunch of stuff. This is not going to be a knitting blog. I just thought I would show you why I haven't been doing journals and stuff. It's because I've really been losing my mind over knitting. And I'm still there. <laughs> so I will try not to make this all about knitting. It's, it's you know, books. Books and paper and paint and things like that. Not necessarily knitting. But I reserve the right to, to insert knitting now and then. Okay, so that's it for me. I will see you guys in the next video. I cannot guarantee when that will be. It might be next week, but I make no promises. We'll see how this week goes. What did my grandmother say? The good Lord willing and the creek don't rise. 
I will be back next week on Tuesday. Bye, everybody.